So this is going to be an example just for sliding with Coulomb. I presented Coulomb previously when we were talking about uh, for the first time we talked about forces on walls and I, I showed you this figure here and it's a little bit uh, confusing because we've got this angle here and then the way that uh, Coulomb works is it says that the resultant is inclined along the back face by phi wall and so what the true inclination of the resultant ends up being is the combination of those two uh, angles and so it's probably a good thing to go ahead and work an example that is a little bit more explicit with an inclined uh, back of the wall and and then just recognize that you know most of the time we're actually not that interested in the total magnitude of the resultant what we're interested in is the vertical and the horizontal components of, of the forces. So let's see an example. So uh, this is alpha. The back of the wall is angled um, 26.5. All right, um, we're gonna use uh, the passive pressure on the front side of this at the end. We'll, we'll run the calculation twice, you'll see. Um, so from the front of the wall down is 25 degrees. And then we've got five feet of embedment. The top of the wall is five feet across. And the bottom of the wall is 20 feet. The backfill material has a unit weight of 105 pounds per foot cubed and a friction angle of 32 degrees. Um, so it, I, I guess it's probably worth drawing out. Uh, there's a resultant. We're not going to try and find it, but the angle of that resultant is um, phi plus alpha and so what we're going to end up doing is calculating this value which is what I'm going to call R sub V and another value that is R sub H um, <clears throat> so to do that, what we need to do is we need to find out um, a K value. And so the K value is uh, pretty involved for this uh, Coulomb method. So we're gonna find KA. Oops, that's not Q, <laughs> that's a fee, fee wall. That's an alpha, but we gotta be a little bit more careful when we're writing.
Okay, so because this thing's so involved and it'd be hard to troubleshoot this, I'm gonna go ahead and put down the numbers that correspond with the different areas that I've got broken out. So you may have a better shot at trying to troubleshoot this if you wanted to put it into Excel. And I, I would encourage that because it is such a, an involved calculation. So the numerator is 0.9911. Cosine squared term is 0 0.7995. So K is 1.326. Um, so we could multiply that times the overall height of the wall. And in this case, it is the face of the wall. So that's something that's important to point out. So let's dimension this thing as H naught. So in previous examples, we had sort of this angle and we said that this soil here within this triangle was um, it going along for the ride. That's not how Coulomb works. Uh, we're just going to use H naught, uh, unlike the previous example. So um, one way to work this problem is to break the Ks out as a K for the horizontal and a K for the vertical. And, and you'll see how they come back together here in just a second. So let me do that part first. So let's say we've got a K that's just the K for the horizontal force. So we could use that to do the calculations for the pressure that corresponds with the horizontal force. So that's just going to be the cosine of um, phi plus alpha, phi wall. And that is 50.6. And then the vertical K and so we can re sort of redraw this figure um, something a, a little bit smaller let's say it figure remember we're trying to solve a statics problem so we've got a weight we've got r sub v and we've got r sub h there's friction on the bottom and then there's going to be passive and we're going to ignore that at first and then we'll come back and do the calculations for it again. Okay, so um, now let's find the vertical effective stress at Z equals H naught. And so that's gonna correspond, it's, it's kind of strange to see because it doesn't exactly correspond with the bottom of this but uh, it is the right way to think about it. So let's find that vertical stress. That's 105 pounds per cubic foot times uh, 30 feet. And then we're gonna use that to find the resultants. So here's Section three, let's find the resultants. So one half base times height. So here's the vertical stress times K A H H naught.
and that's pounds per foot of wall. And then uh, we need to sum all the forces in the vertical directions. To do that, we need to get the weight of the wall. So the unit weight of concrete we're going to use is 155. Maybe a little high, but it is there. So now we're kind of doing the area calculation. So 30 feet times 5 feet plus the triangular part. So the total weight is 58125 pounds per linear foot of wall. So now what we need to do is our sliding calculations. So our sum of forces in the vertical direction are 48431. That's the result and that's the weight of the soil that's pushing down on the back of the wall plus the weight of the wall. So then we need to get the frictional forces. That's the sum of the vertical forces times a coefficient of friction. Our factor of safety is that resisting forces, the, that's just friction, and then the driving forces that we calculated, that's the horizontal force. And that's really not good enough. So let's calculate with passive. So um, Coulomb has an equation for passive, but most people agree that it's really just too large. And so we have to use ranking for passive, which is fine because the front of the wall is not inclined and, and neither is the, um, the, the material, the soil in front of the wall. So um, adding passive, So we've got to get our K for passive. This is a uh, ranking, not Coulomb. Okay, so then the passive force It's only five feet deep. Okay, so we're adding 4,266, so we'll recheck factor safety again. That's gonna be our previous value of friction plus now the passive pressure. So we get 1.3, which is, that's that's fine. We can use that. Um, so this example might have felt a little bit 
uh, different than how I presented it in other ways. And I, I just want to go back and point out uh, how it's different. Um, so if we if we look at the way that um, I calculated it this time, um, we we actually broke out uh, the K's with the sine and cosine here before. So we've got a sine and cosine here. Whereas before, what I might have done is calculate an R value, and then um, from there we would get R sub V would be just that resultant times the sine of 50 in this case, uh, and then R sub H would be that uh, overall resultant times uh, the cosine of 50. It's, it's really six and one half dozen the other. It, it is similar, uh, it, again, this time I calculated the vertical stress first, um, but uh, later on, what you can see is I skipped that step uh, for this part of the calculation. So um, gamma K H, uh, that's the horizontal stress. Um, so, so gamma H, that's the vertical stress. I didn't do that this time. And so you can see how potentially um, we could have skipped this step. So it just kind of depends on how you want to think about it. Um, I think that if you're going to plug something into Excel, it probably makes the most sense to break out the calculation separately rather than just having one massive equation. It's a little bit easier to check. It's a little bit easier to go in and change things as you're working. Um, so I, I presented this in a slightly different way, but it is ultimately the same. Um, so please don't let that confuse you. And if it does confuse you, it's probably good to go back and look at the other example and see how they're si the similar and different and, and try to rectify why it still works and why it's still the actual same answer.